G'day ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another one of my first impressions videos. So I'm still calling it first impressions after all this time. I have absolutely no bloody idea what to call it. I was thought about calling it uh, Games Audit or the Great Steam Games Audit as this is pretty much a review of all the crappy games that have been sitting in my Steam library for years. However, I don't really think that really sticks to what I'm doing here, so I'm just going to leave it as first impressions for now. But enough about that. What we are looking at here is a game from Teotl Studios called The Ball. And it is, as you might guess, about a ball. This ball, in fact, in particular. It is a first-person puzzle game in the vein of Portal. Now, mind you, the comparison to Portal there is more apt than you would think. Hell, in some of the survival maps, you even have a level that is specifically called Portal that features a lot of Portal assets. I believe this is a, this was made um, for the potato sack little thing that was going on for the release of Portal 2 a number of years ago. Speaking of a number of years ago, this game was released in 2010, so it is relatively old. The graphics, while they do hold up, the technology behind them, as you can see from the nasty anti-aliasing you can see on the edges there, it doesn't really hold up after all this time. And you can't really change it either. If you go into the settings here, well, you're absolutely screwed. There is no way to change anti-aliasing in any way. The beginning resolution with this game was something ridiculously small and I had to crank it all up to 920 1080 just to get anything bearable out of this game. And you can just see it in the back there. Oh, the anti-aliasing really, really would help with this game. Just, oh, it's icky. I'm not really much of a graphical whore, but those jaggedy edges really do stick out to me like a sore thumb. But yes, while we're on the options menu, you might as well have a look at all the key binding and stuff. There's not a lot here to look at. While you can rebind all the keys you can use, there is not a lot to actually worry about. You've pretty much got left mouse, right mouse, WASDA, and jump. That's pretty much all you're going to need to use with this game. Anyways, I feel that is all we need to say before the game. Oh yes, um, there is a little bit of spoilers ahead. I'm going to try and avoid it as much as I can. I would go into survival um, here just to show you how the game works and everything, but I don't feel like survival game modes would really do the game's actual meat, which is the campaign, justice. So I'm going to go into the campaign. I'm going to avoid anything that would be too spoilery. However, I give no guarantees. So I'm just going to go to... I believe it's up to Teotl 2. And now we shall begin the game. So I've played the game for a bit over two hours now, and it doesn't look like it is too long a game as it seemed to be already halfway through. Now, the actual game itself, as I mentioned before, there's only really two buttons you're going to need to worry about. Very Portal-esque, mind you, and I'm going to try and avoid mentioning Portal as much as possible, even though I'm just screaming out to do so. You've got the push ability with your gun here, and you've got the pull ability with your gun. And these abilities manipulate this ball here, which is the namesake of the game, to doing different things. There are different um, puzzles that can be solved for using... Ooh, what is this? Do I need to push that? I do need to push that. Okay, so how do I get up? Okay. How am I going to get that ball up then? Crouch. Activate. Activate. There we go. Oh, Christ. 
Oh, never mind. There's this thing in there that we need to press. There we go. So, what do we need to do? Do I need to get through here? Oh, I do. There we go. That was simple. So yes, that was an example of the puzzles in this game. Most of them are fairly self-explanatory. They will confuse you for a bit like it did with me, but in general there's nothing here that's going to make you keep racking your brain. Generally, there's two things for you to interact with outside of pushing these buttons here. You've got the buttons that you can push with yourself and the buttons you can push with the ball. There are a couple of other things in the game. For instance, there is combat, surprisingly enough. Which if I spot some enemies, hello. And then I will show you. Combat is also fairly simple, nothing too tricky. It mainly revolves around using the ball to squish enemies, which is, mind you, quite satisfying. It is almost like playing a good game of bowling. But with the added benefit of squishing zombies. Oh, do I need to go across here? Hello. Need to go right? No, need to go. Okay, well that did something. Do you need to go back up? I presume I would. Ah, the ball's been stuck up there. Huh. Okay. This is probably one of the trickier, or least self-explanatory puzzles you'll see in this game, mind you. Everything else is quite... quite self-explanatory, normally. Okay, so go back up here. This gets pulled up by the magnet. What am I supposed to do with that is the real question. Can I already get up there? No. Huh. Oh! Oh, here we go. See, it just requires a little bit of exploring. Now, a little bit about the story, even though there isn't too much of a story there. The basis of this game is you're part of a expedition crew that has uncovered ancient ruins and... Where did the ball go? Ah, there it is. And you had been lost down a hole and thus... Oh yes, pull that up here. And thus your friends were just like, lol, go explore um, while we look for a way to get you out. It has been quite a time and distance since that. So I'd feel like... Uh, what did that button do anyways? Ah, I see. Pull that over there, hop up here. So the game really doesn't have a lot of sense to it in the character's actual story. However, it does... Ah, oh, the button was over here. Yep, and that pulls it over here. Yep, and that was this puzzle complete. Yes. However, the actual story of this place is quite interesting. I won't spoil it for you. It is one of the better parts of this game, or should I say it's one of the parts that keeps you interested in this game. Thus it would be a crying shame to simply... Oh, yes, that's something I... That's one of the um, secrets you could find around this game, and it'll tell you a little bit about the story of the place. Which I feel like I shouldn't spoil too much, as that is half the fun. Ugh, those effects. Ugh. Give me the heebie-jeebies. 
Now I would like to show you some of the combat, if at all possible. Which we probably will get to up here. This seems to be a nice big area. Hello? Zombies! A little hand here explaining how the game works would be appreciated. Oh yes, the water effects in this game are quite neat. While the water itself isn't like too groundbreaking, just the little the little deformation as the ball goes through the water is quite nice. Even though there isn't like any waves or anything like you would normally expect, there's still a little deformation effect which still still looks pretty for me. get to find something up here. Yeah. Ah. Hmm. As you probably would have guessed by now, the actual design of this game in terms of its art style and aesthetics is kind of a mixture between um, Mayan slash Aztecian, as you can see with these uh, um, obsidian club sword things as well as the European style architecture with the big gears and such you wouldn't have seen in ancient Maya and it's also got a little bit of Egyptian theming to it as well since many of the enemies remind you of ah someone's supposed to sit here go on down you go now I just pop through here hmm Oh dear, I hope there's nothing to fight around here. Combat is rather scarce, mind you. There isn't a, spe a lot to... Huh. Okay, so the water channel goes around here. There isn't a lot to fight in this game. It is mainly a puzzle game. However, the combat is actually quite entertaining. Surprisingly so. The enemies are... Su the enemies are satisfying to actually kill. I wonder what's all leaked down these hallways. It just seems like a lot of empty space for nothing. Ah. So this is another puzzle that needs to be solved. Where did the ball go? Let's play down here. Let's just get you moving, shall we? around here. So yes, before I get sidetracked again, um, combat takes very much a backseat to the puzzle elements of this game. Oh, why does this need to go down here? Is this door going to open? Probably not. I probably need to push something here. It sounded like it did something. Oh, symbols there. Right, so... Um... Symbols must mean... Okay, so we got that cylinder there. Mm, where else do we come through? So we have that cylinder. Have the cylinder that's not at an angle. And we had... This face. Righto. Ah, another example of how this game really doesn't um, rack your brains too much. You pretty much just pick up on things relatively quickly. If you want a uh, quite a... Ah, never mind, I got lost for a second there. If you want a relaxing, satisfying experience... Okay, so we need to go from this one, this one, this one. No? Okay, must be the opposite. If you want a relaxed, satisfying experience to play, this is probably the game for you. The fights are, well, none have been actually too tricky thus far. Um, come on, let's get up here. I've actually not encountered any enemy that's required any more thoughts than run over with ball and squish. Oh dear, that doesn't sound too good. There, oh, this is an example of what I was about to get to, actually. 
there is some platforming elements to the game. Mind you, they are mercifully few and far between, as you can see here. The ball really doesn't care about the spikes at all. Uh, I feel like there's something else I need to do around here. So there's a pad up there, and there's nothing up there. It looks like there's something over there, but how do I get to that is the question. Another thing to note of the game, and this is more a quirk of the engine, I feel, rather than um, the game itself. As you might have noticed by me jumping around the place all the time, uh, jumping is by far a lot more... Okay, so what's this going to happen? Jumping is by far a lot quicker than... Okay, so how am I going to do this? Oh... So I'm going to have to be quick. I don't know. <laughs> I keep getting sidetracked very easily. Jumping is a lot quicker than running in this game, which is a symptom of a lot of games in this engine, actually. Ah, so I must have needed to jump over there, there, there. But how do I activate... Ah, this is going to be a bit of a problem. Come on, let's go over here. Let's see if we can get over here. Yep, do this. Jump over to this. Jump over to this. Oh, these pads must react to you being on them. That's the logical explanation to it. So, can I make that? I think I can make that. Yes, the pads do react to you being on them. It is not just from the button. Right. So now, we just have to figure out how to do this. Does that inverse it? does inverse it. Okay, well that didn't work the way I planned. Let's get back over here. Jump up here. Audio is quite nice. I feel like it could do with a bit of Okay, so we need to activate that over there. I feel it could do with a bit of variety, mind you, as... Whoop, hop over here, hop over here, hop over here, hop over here. Aha! Is there anything else I need to do? I think that was it. Yes. No, that was not all I needed to do, apparently. Uh, well, I pressed that. Oh, hello. That's... Never mind, I'm just going to die. So yes, as you can probably notice by the jumping, the oof and ah thing constantly over and over, uh, the audio in this game could do with a lot of variety. It does get a bit repetitive, just hearing the oofs and the ahs of this guy over and over and over. It even sounds like he's a bit in pain, mind you. Just oof, oof, ah! Yes. Um, just have to solve this puzzle. Hit this. Hit it. Actually, it going up and pressing that button up there. There we go. Yeah. As I've, as the point I've already made already, the puzzles really don't take too much. I'd really love to show you the combat in this, and in fact, um, if I don't find any combat in the next area, then I think... Ooh, some monkeys to run over. 
That's the crunch I'm looking for. Aha! Here's some enemies. Ooh, some different enemies. They shoot fire. So I'm guessing the logical thing to do is to use the ball as a shield. As well as a sword. What I don't trust up here is I feel like this is a bit of a trap. That doesn't sound good. Oh, there's enemies down here. We just squash them. Yes. I'll have none of that face gnawing, thank you. Doesn't seem like there's anything more down there, except for possibly secrets, but again, I don't want to ruin the story too much. Haven't encountered any boss fights or anything. Hello. Haven't encountered boss fights or anything similar. It looks like there might be giant um, zombies that you might fight eventually, but I haven't really spotted them as of yet, and it's been at least halfway through the game, so they're probably going to end up being at the end of the game. There has been this recurring sort of pharaoh figure, undead pharaoh figure, mind you, that has been popping up every now and then, that you might end up fighting. Oh dear, what's... This all feels like a trap. That is okay, as I have a ball. As long as I have my balls, I am quite a happy man. Yeah. Yes, I abs- Ah, oh, there's a secret up there. I don't want to touch that. I at least had to make the balls joke at least once. Okay, so what do these statues need to do? Do they need to face somewhere in particular? Do they need to face each other? I would presume they do. Or do they open doors? There's another possibility. And they do not open doors. Okay, so we should pop over back here. So yes, as you would have seen p through these past uh, 20 minutes, this is pretty much the entire game. There is... Ooh, they do open doors. Excellent. There we go. This is what I need to stand on. Has done something. The door over here that my ball needs to touch. Ugh. The jokes almost write themselves with this. It's very immature, but. Okay, so this one, ball needs to touch. Ah, that must be for the box to touch. Never mind. So yes, you would have seen everything this game has to offer. The combat. Oh. Oh, hello. So everything needs to... touch it at once. So the ball goes over to here. And then I will need to go over to here. So yes. In my opinion, with this game, I've been telling you mostly about the facts of this game so far, is it's... Ah, oh, cripes, cripes, crap, 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 crap. Give me my ball, give me my ball, give me my ball, give me my ball. No, that was the opposite of giving me my ball. No, 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 no. You die. No, no, you die. Over here. Boof. <sighs> Much better. So yes. <laughs> the game is quite satisfying to play. Just killing zombies is just brilliant. Though there is it is quite few and far between. Um as I've kept mentioning. Okay, so there must be another puzzle over here I need to do. But it doesn't seem like it. Logically, there'd be a puzzle over here for me to do. There's a zombie and a pad there. Well, there's something over there, so I must need to do something here. I need to hop over a wall? Do these symbols mean anything? 
I have no idea. Oh, hello. No. Doesn't look like that's the way at all. Unless that doesn't seem to go. Oh, hello. That might go somewhere. But I don't think I could make it up there. Must be some way to modify it a bit. It's pushing this around, do it? It does. Okay, so in order to get up there, I need this around here, which means I need to turn it a bit. Yes, that looks a bit better. So hop up here, hop up here, miss. Try and hop up there again. And keep my ball handy because I feel like there's going to be some zombies trying to nom on my face. can pull the ball from far away, it just can take a little bit to get, but you don't really need to worry about the ball getting stuck anywhere. Mm. I might just finish this last puzzle and then wrap things up. I could get the secret, but I feel that that would be a bit too spoilery. Over here, some zombies that I should be avoiding. Ball, 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 get him! There we go. So yes. In summary, I personally would recommend this game. It's while there isn't anything special to write home about in terms of how interesting the mechanics are oh, there's some zombies to fight over here or how original it is in terms of its actual gameplay style I mean, the gameplay itself, pushing and pulling a ball is relatively unique I haven't really personally played anything that has um, been too similar it's still very Portal-esque in what it does. And I have completely failed in not mentioning Portal as an example. Oh god, this... this... Bleh, in what? Impressions is really falling down the toilet. But yes, this game is $10 on Steam, I do believe. And just judging off of that price and the hours you get out of this game, as well as how relatively unique it is, in terms of gameplay it's not unique, well, I've already made that point, I personally would recommend this game, and if you could find it on sale, I would really recommend this game. Do I want to hop down here? Screw it, let's hop down here. Okay. So yes, as I get lost further and further and further into this abandoned city, I shall bid you guys a good day. Ah uh, dear. Ah uh, dear. Ah uh, dear. So yes, um, if you guys could leave a uh, comment in the video, um, telling me about what I do and what I what I do wrong and what I do right that would be most certainly appreciated feedback is one of the most important things to me uh, and yes thank you very much Ugh. hello are you, are you afraid of me? is this hey, yes Ra, hello what is he Oh, 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 um, okay then, well on that note I will bid you guys a good day and thank you very much for watching, ta -ra.